Hello. <laughs> so, um, and I don't even know, let's just say that the meringues and Laurie Jackson, and I'm not sure about any of anyone else here, were, were involved um, with this situation. So the person that's coming is a person named Birgitta Ingemansen. She has just written the book um, about the dear folks at home. Berwick Historical Society, when it was more active, had um, quite an invigorating time with Birgitta Ingemansen. And Birgitta is the person who is going to be coming on Zoom in October. Birgitta is a, she, she is a professor, she used to be a professor of Russian studies at um, Washington State. And she had connections with Russia um, in Vladivostok mostly. And so that's how all of this came about. Um, Eleanor Lord lived in that mustard colored house up on Sawmill Hill. Um, and she lived there until she was about 25. They had uh, a grist mill and a lumber mill. Eleanor was born in 1864 and she went to school in Berwick, decided to go to um, high school in Summersworth. There she met her future husband who was from Summersworth and his name was Frederick Prey from the Echo Farm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. His sister lived in Vladivostok with her husband and they had like a trading post there. Vladivostok was a frontier also. It was um, a new port and it was very close to Japan and China. Um, so they were having, you know, it was really like a, like a trading post. They, they, he, he started out selling you know, furs and um, you know, trading furs and just stuff kind of like, I think, trading post did out west here. And they needed someone to come and help them, and so they recruited Ted and Eleanor Prey, who was the new wife, and um, they went off to help out over there in Vladivostok for five years, and never came back. <laughs> Come to find out, Berwick knew nothing about, about Eleanor Lord, Eleanor Lord Prey, but Vladivostok knows her well. There is a life-size statue of Eleanor Lord Prey in Vladivostok. Um, I think it's even bigger than life-size, and she's walking down the steps holding a letter because she lived there and she wrote over 2,000 letters back to the dear folks at home, which were Berwick. She documented every single thing that went on there. They would go and they'd have balls and they'd have activities and I mean they were invited and so she would write back home and tell them about all the stuff that was going on. Um, and so over 2,000 letters later, <laughs> the letters were saved by the family. They saved everything. So the granddaughter um, was interested so she took it upon herself, her name was Pat Silver, and she took it upon herself to put all the letters together. And they are now in the um, Library of Congress. And so Birgitta ended up writing these books. She wrote The Sunny Neighborhood, which is a Vladivostok tale. They're half the book because the half the book is in English and the other half is in Russian. She wrote, um, two books of selected letters. This is 1894 to 1906. Uh, same thing, Russian, half Russian and half American or English. And then 1907 to 1917, this is 
the next book of, of letters that she wrote. So in The Sunny Neighborhood, um, she has all about their life in Vladivostok. And sort of, sort of a sequel to this is her um, Dear Folks at Home, A New England Tale. So she has a Vladivostok tale and a New England tale. Birgitta came here um, with a Russian uh, film crew from Moscow and they did a documentary. And um, we, anyone who was, you know, we were all involved. Все смеются надо мной, а я ничего не могу с собой поделать. Одна только мысль, что можно жить где-то, где я не буду видеть эту голубую бухту и два залива, приводит меня в ужас. Я чувствую иногда, как будто она моя, как будто сестра. All sorts of people met her, and there were some people from Russia, and the whole town ended up being involved. I think maybe somebody has this book, but these are um, Eleanor Lord Prey was also. A photographer, and she. It was when photograph uh, you first started being, you know, having photography. So she just took incredible pictures of Vladivostok. Um, and so what the people of Vladivostok do is they take this book, and they take her letters book, and they walk all around Vladivostok, going, "Oh yeah, that, yeah, 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 this happened here, and this happened here," and she was there for. Just a couple more things. She was there for so long. I think like I don't know how long. <laughs> Thirty years. So she saw um, the Sino-Japanese War. She saw World War One. Um, she saw the Czar overthrown. She and then she saw I think Lenin coming. And basically, Vladivostok history was kind of wiped out by the, the communists when they, when they came in. And so these letters published this way um, have a huge support in Vladivostok and people are just sort of really learning about Vladivostok's history now because it's not available. And so that's why the Russian people are so intrigued with her and her letters because it's really brought back their, you know, a huge period in their history that they was taken away. But Gita has asked that because she taught for many years, she would prefer not to come and do a presentation where everyone has not, is coming in dry. And she said, listen, I know it's only a month, <clears throat> but go to the library, pick up the book, and just pick a chapter. It's not in any particular order. There's a chapter on the music that Eleanor Lord yeah, I mean, Prey listened to, and, and they're sort of different flavors, and you can just flip it open and read a chapter, and then you have some context going into the, going into the October meeting. But she'd love for us to have a lively discussion and questions and have, have some, some more information than just, welcome to our meeting, <laughs> tell us about your book, because that's not going to be nearly as interesting for us or for her. Ha 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 